Technology and American cultural norms have changed at such a blindingly fast pace that we sometimes forget just how weird the world used to be. Things that were once commonplace seem strange today, although it's probably also true that humans who live 100 years in the future will think the things we do are pretty strange too. Sadly, we don't have any way to actually show a 22nd century person a YouTube video of someone eating a Tide Pod, but we can at least enjoy our own bemusement at the strange and bizarre habits of our recent ancestors. Homes for disobedient wives and other crazy people America mostly stopped putting people into insane asylums around the same time poor families quit sticking little kids into orphanages. So hooray for progress! According to the American Psychological Association, though, in the early 20th century, mentally ill people or, you know, women who thought maybe their husbands didn't know everything, were sent to the insane asylum. There, they got to live out the remainder of their days in deplorable conditions because it was way easier than divorce. Not everyone who went to an insane asylum was a woman whose husband couldn't be bothered to divorce her. Some genuinely mentally ill people were placed there, too. But the places were really more like holes to die in than places where the mentally ill could be helped with their condition. Happily, that started to change with the advent of psychotherapy and with the general realization that it's just not nice to put people in insane asylums. When Ugly Was Illegal No, it's not the plot of a post-apocalyptic young adult novel. 100 years ago, in many big cities across the United States, it was actually illegal to be ugly. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? According to the Chicago Tribune, in 1881, Alderman James Peavy decided he'd had enough of people he deemed unsightly. So he introduced an ordinance to ban people who were diseased, maimed, mutilated, or in any way deformed so as to be an unsightly or disgusting object from the streets of Chicago. After World War I, when veterans returned home with missing limbs and other disfiguring battle scars, public opinion towards the disabled started to change. But ugly laws remained on the books and their enforcement continued up until the 1950s. Chicago's ugly law wasn't officially dropped until 1974. Trick or Turkey Before there was Halloween, there was Thanksgiving. No, really. People used to dress up in costumes, run around the streets asking for candy, go to extravagant parties on Thanksgiving. According to NPR, an 1897 LA Times article claimed that Thanksgiving was the busiest time of year for manufacturers of and dealers in masks and false faces. But the rambunctious, candy-hungry kids bothered a lot of people. New York's school superintendent even complained that the tradition seemed designed to mostly just annoy adults and was incompatible with modernity. Kids really didn't want to give up the whole candy-getting thing, though, and by the 1930s, the practice of going door-to-door -door in search of treats became a Halloween tradition. Although it was mostly an organized event meant to curtail vandalism and violence, hence the expression trick-or-treat. When Cigarettes Cured Asthma you think your doctor is giving you iffy medical advice? Well, chew on this. 100 years ago, it was not only common for doctors to dismiss the risks of smoking, but sometimes they would also appear in tobacco advertising saying things like cigarettes provide temporary relief of paroxysms of asthma. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. The reason cigarette companies did this is pretty insidious. By the early 20th century, most people were kind of catching on to the whole cigarettes might be bad for you thing, which is what consumers will naturally do when they notice that a product seems to be associated with people dying. What's even sadder, of course, is that those doctor-endorsed cigarette ads persisted well into the 60s, when the Surgeon General finally said, hey, guess what, smoking actually is bad for you. Well, duh. 100,000 doctors have quit smoking cigarettes. You can, too. Professional Waker Uppers Before alarm clocks were invented, people still had to get up in the morning. Some people practiced the art of over-drinking, or drinking so much water before bed that you'd wake up early because you had to pee. Ingenious, really. There were also other, more precise methods of making sure you got up in the morning. According to the BBC, in the UK and Ireland, there was actually a profession called a knocker-upper. Yeah, yeah, we know what you're thinking. You're gross. A knocker-upper was actually a person who went around the neighborhood with a long stick tapping on people's windows, and then presumably had to duck to avoid all the bricks being thrown by people who just wanted 10 more minutes. Oddly, the practice didn't completely die out until the 1970s, probably because a tap on the window was really a much nicer way to wake up than that awful shriek from your alarm clock. Early 20th Century PowerPoint 
Somewhere between cavemen staring at their reflections in a puddle and millennials gazing unblinking into their smartphones was the Magic Lantern Show, an early form of screen entertainment that preceded the movie theater by a couple hundred years. The technology was simple. An artist would paint an image on a piece of glass, and then the image would be projected onto a screen, much like a PowerPoint presentation, except it was meant to not actually put entire audiences to sleep. Unsurprisingly, as movies got more popular, magic lantern shows got less popular, until one day people finally said to themselves, why am I falling asleep in these lame magic lantern theaters when I can fall asleep in a movie theater instead? And then magic lantern shows went the way of the Palm Pilot, leaving us all to hope that PowerPoint presentations will one day follow. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.